Hey guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial where we are building this CMS application using ASP.NET Core 3 and Angular 10. In the last video tutorial, we implemented the dashboard service. Now we have a dashboard view that displays the application information like the total number of users and the new users in our application. There are two static cards with there are two cards with static values which we haven't implemented and as I've explained that this will be in the second phase of the application tutorial when we implement blogging and we will use these two cards to display the statistics. In this video tutorial we will be focusing on the users section where we will be creating the all users view. In the all users view you will see a table that is created using the tabulator framework from JavaScript. We will be using the uh, option to create new user through a bootstrap model. This is a bootstrap model which will have a form on it embedded onto it. We will use this form to add the new user details and then to add these user to our database. We also have the option to edit the existing user and that is also done through a bootstrap form model which contains the existing users details loaded onto a edit form. We have the delete button which when clicked the option to delete the user will be provided and if we go ahead and click yes the user will be deleted. So in this way we are going to implement and show all the users in our application. The pagination also will be created using tabulator. If you are not familiar with tabulator I will add the link in the video description and when you go to tabulator.info this is the website or the official website for this framework. It's completely open source. All the code is available on GitHub. You can see how you can create different tables. If you go to the example section, here there will be a list of tables that you can use and implement using this framework. If you don't want to use the tabulator framework, you can also go ahead and use the data tables uh, framework, but I would not be using that in this uh, video tutorial series. So if you want to follow along, you would have to use the tabulator framework and I'm going to use that. So here there are different ways which you can display data using this framework. You can research further and you can change the UI accordingly as per your requirement. So let's go ahead without wasting time and start creating this user list view in our admin panel under the user section. So here the first thing that we want to do to implement the user section is to create the views and to create the views we will go ahead to the areas folder go to the admin folder or the admin area we'll go to views and here we have the folder created for user so we will add a new file we will add the view start file to implement our custom layout for displaying the users so we will select the razor view start we have been using custom layout for most of these sections. If you don't want to do that, you can use the default admin layout. But the reason we do that, it is because we don't want to display the cards or the uh, dashboard cards on this view. Since the dashboard cards are part of admin layout view, therefore we create custom views. And it's easy to also maintain the UI if we have custom uh, layout for each section. So here we will go ahead and create a new custom layout file and we will add it in the shared folder. We will call this custom layout file as admin user layout. So let's go ahead and add it. So we add the reference in the layout file and then we go to the shared folder and we will create this new layout file. We will select ASP.NET Core Razor View or we can just select the razor layout. We have an option for that and just change the name to admin layout. To admin user layout, sorry. So I have put an underscore just to uh, identify this file as a partial view. So let's go ahead and hit new. And here we will go ahead and get rid of this default code and add the custom layout code which I have already created. So I have created the custom layout or added the custom layout uh, implementation to this file. And the main thing here is the injection of our admin base view model 
so that we can access the properties that we need to display the data on the admin panel. So we have used the sidebar, the top bar and the footer displayed on the uh, layout and then we will display our custom body that we are going to uh, create using tabulator and display it on the center of the view. So that should be it for this view. Now we would go ahead and go back to the uh, go ahead and go back to our controllers. Here we would need to implement the controller. So we have already created the controller, user controller, but we have not implemented any logic. We have to implement this logic. So let's go ahead and implement our logic. So first thing first, important that this area is only or this section is only accessed by our admin. So we will use the authorize uh, attribute with the authentication scheme admin that we have created to prevent any unauthorized access. So let's go ahead and then add the reference. Once we have done that, we will go ahead and get rid of this uh, view, default view that we had created because we are going to write some more code inside this controller. So as you know the drill, we require certain objects that need to be instantiated and we use dependency ingestion to instantiate these required objects. So we will go ahead and add these objects. So I have added all the required objects that we would use in this particular view, which is the user section. So I have created the uh, properties objects and I have instantiated them using dependency ingestion in the controller. Now we will go ahead and create the index view but we will be returning a task of type I action result. So we will go ahead and implement the index method. So I have implemented the logic for the index view. We also would need to add the reference to dependency ingestion. Sometimes when you hover over the object, you would not see an IntelliSense option to uh, display, which will tell you that which particular class to import. That usually happens in the case of extensions for dependency ingestion. So once you add that, this will this error will go away. So now you can see that all the errors are not it's gone so we can go ahead and use this view so we created this index view and we are injecting the admin base view model as we did in the profile controller as well and i've explained why we do that and to keep it short we are injecting this admin base view model because when we go to the uh, layout that we are using that is the base layout for that we just created in the shared folder we are injecting the admin base view model so we need to make sure that when we call the view, we have this model ready and injected. So let's go ahead and then create the next method. So if we go back to our browser, here you will see that when we uh, refresh this page and the users are loaded, usually when also when we add a new user, the users will be added so let's me go ahead and quickly just show your demo like if i try to save this particular user the user details are edited as you can see we'll see a pop-up but the page does not refresh and the page does not refresh because we are using the ajax attribute we have created the ajax only attribute and we will make use of that in this particular view as well. We have made use of the Ajax attribute. If you remember in the in the control in the controller in the controller, not the profile, sorry, the site setting controller. Here we made use of the Ajax only attribute because we wanted to update the user settings without refreshing the page. Therefore, we created this attribute to identify the request if it's an Ajax request or no same uh, attribute we are going to make use in this particular uh, views where we want to display users because whenever we make any changes we add new user we don't want the page to reload instant instead we want the data to be updated without the page being reloaded so that's why we'll make use of this particular attribute in this uh, controller if you have not watched the video tutorial series and just watching this video tutorial then you would not understand what I'm saying. So it is recommended that you watch the previous video tutorial series where we created this attribute service, which includes the Ajax only attribute. And I have explained why we are using that. So we will not spend more time explaining the same thing again. 
So let's go ahead and quickly implement the uh, method that we need over here. So here I have created another method. I've called this method as get users, which has an Ajax only attribute over it, which means this method can be used only with Ajax request. And this method will return a partial view. This partial view will basically hold all the tabulator related uh, table and the HTML or bootstrap code that we need to display the data. So we have to go ahead and now create this uh, user layout so let's go ahead and create it we would not need the route id at this point just to get users we, we are just get, getting a list of users not a single user so i'll remove that i'm just going to go back to the shared folder and create this view so let's go to the shared folder here and create this view we'll add a new file and we are going to create this razor view we will call this as get user layout so all this method is doing is when this method is called with an ajax request it is returning a partial view that's all it does all the logic to display the users the list of users create the table will be inside this view so let's go ahead and implement that logic over here so here I have implemented the bootstrap code that is required to display the view. If you notice that I have commented out the HTML uh, anti-forgery token. Now the reason I commented this out is because we are going to have a separate video tutorial on how to implement anti-forgery tokens in our entire application and how to use it. So I don't want to mix two informations. So I will leave this code commented, but don't worry, I will be teaching you how to implement the tokens, anti-forgery tokens in this application project. For now, you will also see that I have implemented two partial views at the bottom of this page. And why do you think I have implemented these two partial views? These two partial views, as the name suggests, is the add user layout and the edit user layout. For the edit user layout and the add user layout, we are using models, bootstrap models, and the model code will be added to these two partial layouts. So let's go ahead and create these two partial layouts and add the code. So I'll go to the shared folder and add this new file. I'll select the razor view and then I'm going to add, or I can just select the layout, depends on whatever you like. So I'm going to select the razor view, hit new. Here I will get the comment created, get rid of it. And here we will implement the bootstrap code that we need to dis display the model pop-up. So here I have added the code that is needed to display the model pop-up. And if I scroll back to the top, here I have also injected the add user model. Now here's, this is the model that usually contains the property values for the users uh, related information and so if we go to the uh, model service we have already created this model which we use for the user details so the add user model is here and in the add user model you can see we have also added the attributes and the validation when we updated the users profile in the admin panel we use the same model when we are adding a new user as well we are going to use the same model because these are the same properties that we would need to create or update a user so we will use the same model and we have to inject this model over here so that we can make use of the properties that we need in this model so now the add user model is created let's go to the add user layout is created which contains the model let's go to the uh, shared folder and create the edit user layout as well which will contain another model that will be used to edit the user information so we just saw an example where i click the update button so when we click the update button the edit user model will pop up when i click the new user button the add user model will pop up so these two models have their individual partial layout that i have created and which is quite obvious if you are coding uh, you don't want all your code to be in one file so it's better to have it separate and it looks more organized so let's go ahead and add this new file raise a view and i'll call this edit user layout 
so already added this uh, layout that we need the code and have injected the same add user model because we need the same properties to update the user value as well now this add user and this update user is uh, is going to be any 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 user in your application it's not just going to be the user who who is logged into the account because the admin is basically the owner of your application and he should have he or she should have access to every user in your application the admin should be able to add a new user or edit a user or delete a user so that's why we have these two models and these functionality that we are going to implement here now that we have the partial layouts created to, the, to be displayed on the user section let's go ahead and work on the index view we'll go ahead and add the index view in the user view folder so we'll add a new file we will create a new razor view we'll call it index and then we will hit new in the index view we will get rid of this comment and we will add the code that is required to load the index view so here i have added the logic or the code that is needed to load the index view if you look at the top i have injected the admin base view model since we'll be using the objects and properties from the admin base view model i have added a title for the page or the view here we are loading the get user layout which is go basically going to be the model that we want to load and the other information from the get user layout so if we go to the get user layout we are calling the model layout and we are displaying the view on the get user layout uh, partial view so we are going to display this get user layout here after the uh, title or basically in the body of our view the next thing that we would do is some styling some inline styling for the chosen drop downs as we did in the profile controller view if you haven't watched that video tutorial i'll recommend you to watch it since the chosen drop downs come with a default view i have changed the view or the css styling for that particular drop down with some custom styling you could do the same or you could use the default styling if you want to use the default styling you don't have to add this css code here for the other css style sheets that you see we have already installed chosen jquery ui and suite alert 2 using library manager which is libman we have a file that we are going to create minified version for user.min.css and we are going to also implement the tabulator boot library with the bootstrap styling so we have not yet installed this tabulator framework we are going to do that very soon and here in the section for scripts we are using the tabulator script minified version of the tabulator script which as i said we will be installing we are going to load the user.js file which we will be creating we have already installed Sweet alert jquery ui chosen library framework and we are going to create a custom uh, javascript file which will contain the method to generate passwords for our users if we go to the view user layout view and if i try to edit a user you will see that there is an option to reset the password so when as an admin i click the password reset password button I can generate a uh, password for the user which will be emailed to the user so that the user can use it to log into the account. So I don't have to create this password manually. I can just create this uh, passwords for the users using this reset button. So that's why we are going to use that uh, password generator method that we are going to add to the password generator JavaScript file which we will be creating. The same for the new user we can generate a password like this as you can see the demo when i keep clicking the uh, button every time a new password is generated and this is done through that password generator method that which we are going to create so if i go back to the code now 
you also have loaded the validation script and I have explained why we use the validation script to validate the input elements or the elements on the form to make sure that the form is valid and then we have added the range validator code which also I have explained that we have the terms and condition checkbox and we need to make sure that the checkbox is checked before the form is submitted so we use this piece of code to validate our form and the checkbox so now let's go ahead and install the tabulator library so that we can make use of the tabulator framework in our application so let's do it so to install tabulator we will right click on our project go to tools open in terminal and then we will type in the following command libman install and the version number along with the name of the library now here i have used this specific version number because this is the latest stable version that i used while creating the main project but if you want to use the latest version you can remove the version number flag and just specify tabulator and it will install the latest version in your application since i want to use a specific version i have applied the version number at the end of the command i will hit enter and uh, now libman will ask us where we want this library to be installed so we will install it in the default location So the files are being fetched now the library is installed and if we go to the root folder of our application we should see tabulator installed over here and all the files will be created inside the appropriate folder for tabulator so now what we would need to do is go ahead and start uh, creating the uh, uh, UI with or the JavaScript methods and the user.js uh, file that we need that will contain all the JavaScript methods that we would be using so let's go ahead and create it so we will start with the custom CSS file that we need for the user view so I've created this user.css file inside the admin folder and this admin folder is part of the custom folder which is located in the root folder and this custom folder contains all our custom files that we are using in this application now we have used the minified version of this file therefore we need to add this file reference to the bundle.conf bundle config json file so that we can minify it if you have not watched the video on how to bundle your files in the application how to use bundling there is a video on this in the video tutorial series go ahead and watch it we will not spend time explaining the process so now so here inside the bundle config.json i'm going to add the uh, bundling for the admin uh, for the user.css file which will be converted to user.min.css and that's what we have referenced over here right now i'm not using the minified version of the of the file because i would need to debug it so i will just use the full version of the user.js file that i have created in the uh, script section so i have just added this user.js file and i'm using it after or when we are going to deploy the project on the server we will reference the minified version for now we will leave it as it is so what we can do is we will now go ahead and also create the password generator file since we have referenced it over here and the password generator file i've created a folder called as common that's because we can share these files with uh, other uh, users not just admin so it's not just limited to the admin so the password generator uh, .js file will contain the method that is needed to generate new password so let's add this method over here so here is the method that i have added i've called it password underscore generator method and this is the only method that we will be adding to this file 
here in this method parameter we are passing the length of the password so if the length is not specified then we set the default length to 10 digits or 10 characters here I'm not going to go into details of what and how we are generating the password I have implemented the password generation in this method following the logic that we have used in the startup file so if we go to the startup file of our application here in the middleware we have set certain conditions for the password under the services dot add identity like we require one digit we require the length to be a specific length we require to, it to be alphanumeric and so on like uppercase lowercase and other options so using the following logic i have implemented this method over here and this method will create a password based on that logic that we have implemented go ahead you are free to change the logic and create your own password values but i will be using this particular password generator that i have created for generating the password so that we don't get errors while we submit this password to our database so now we can close this password generator file we are done with this password generator file also we can save the bundle config json file and close it we don't need it now now let's go back to the user.js file and start implementing all the required methods that we would be calling from the uh, views that we created to display the user section so let's go ahead and start implementing these methods so guys to save time i have implemented the user.js file with all the required methods that we would need and for every method i have put my comment so that you can understand what each and every method does and what the code is used for but i will still explain to you how uh, these methods work rather than coding this along with you guys in this video tutorial will make this video tutorial very lengthy so i have already implemented it and i only spent spend time explaining the logic so initially we have created a gender value array which contains all the values that we need to be displayed in the gender drop down which will be created using the chosen library that we use for populating drop downs so if we go back to our finished project go to user section and the all users here when i create a new user for the gender section i have these values that are loaded so these values come from the array that we have created in the user.js file then we have initialized certain uh, properties with the target ids of our element so as you know if you are familiar with using jquery when we want to target an element using the id we target it using this particular method which is jquery this dollar stands for jquery and the id of the element so since i will be using these ids multiple times on the edit form as well as on the add user form so i have created these uh, assigned these values to a variable and then i can just call this variable wherever i need these values so that's a short form or a short way to do things in uh, javascript then the country table is initialized to empty uh, so that we can load the countries when the page loads here we have the document.ready method where we initialize our elements so we have used uh, the chosen library to create drop downs so we need to make sure that we initialize the chosen library uh, with the elements that we have on file so for doing that for example here i've initialized the gender options so using these options in the array i have created the drop downs and displayed them in the gender uh, drop down element that we have on our dom similarly i have done the initialization for billing and shipping address you can go through the code and you can understand it but that's what we have done over here we have done the same thing in the profile uh, .js file where we have loaded these values for our profile uh, form so we have followed the same logic here all the way we scroll down after we have initialized the shipping and billing addresses uh, drop downs we then have added an event listener 
to our form button so whenever the add user form button is clicked this event listener will listen for that click and if the click uh, if it if it finds a click it will prevent the default submission of the form that's because i have explained it previously that we use this so that the form is not submitted and the page is not reloaded if the page is reloaded we will lose all the data that we have entered in the form so therefore to prevent the default event uh, we have used this prevent default method now we are going to then check if our form is valid using the jquery unobtrusive library that we have installed so we can call the valid method on our form by targeting the forms id here i have targeted the forms id that's because we have multiple forms on this particular view which are loaded on different models like the edit models and the add user model so you cannot just use the form uh, key over here instead you would have to specify the id if you have multiple forms on the page so that's what we have done and if the form is valid we have created a form data object using the html form data api and then we have uh, added the address uh, shipping address and the billing address of the user if it contains any addresses and then we have called the add user method which we have created over here this is an ajax method where we are calling the backend api and all the apis that i we used here in this prof in this user.js at this point we have not created them so we will be creating them in the upcoming video tutorials so for now we have just called the methods but we once again we have not implemented them so we call this method where the ajax call will be made to the backend and the form data that we pass from the add user method will be passed to our backend which will then add the new user we'll create a new user based on the data that we have received so this uh, is for the event listener for the uh, edit form so i should specify that here if you might find it confusing event listener for the edit user button clicked so we have two models correct one for the add user and one for the edit user both have forms and both have buttons and when the buttons are clicked we are adding a event listener same logic to get the uh, billing address shipping address and the data and then we go ahead and initialize uh, sorry we go ahead and call the edit user method which we have created over here and we call the backend api and we pass the uh, form data to the body of the method call finally in the document.ready method what we are doing is initializing a date time picker because we are using jquery ui date time picker so in this form if we do not initialize the date time picker then this when we click on the date time uh, input element you will not see this calendar drop down because you have not initialized the date time picker in order to see this date time picker when the document or the dom is ready you need to initialize this uh, element or this uh, input element so that you can see this calendar so that's what we have done we have initialized it in the document dot ready method it's so going back so here is the load users and get countries method which we have initially called in the document dot ready because when we go to the ui of our page let's go back i close this when i refresh this page or when i go to home page and come back to the users page i need to make sure this all the list of users is loaded when the document is ready so that's what's happening so initially we are loading all the users and we are also getting all the list of the countries so that we can use these list of countries in the drop down so here when we have all these drop downs for countries we, where does this country come from where, where does all these country value come from it comes from the backend and we have initialized these values when the form or when our document gets ready so going back again now we will go to the other methods that we have used 
and we will be calling these methods from the models. I have already implemented these method names in the models on the buttons or on the different elements. So whenever the event uh, is fired off and this method is called or any of the methods are called, these methods will fire off because we have already I have already implemented it on this particular user.js file. So let's talk about the get user by username. This method is called when you go to the form and you click on this particular edit button, right? So we are going to get to, in order to edit the user's detail. First, we need to get the user's details from our backend. So the get user by username method will get all these details of the user when the button is clicked. So let's go back. So you have understood why we need that method get user by username. The logic is all implemented here. We get the details and then we display the details on the form on the different elements like the address, the gender and so on. So similar logic applied in the profile details page as well where we display the user's details. Once we have the details from the backend, we display it onto the form. Edit user method is called when the edit user button is clicked and already I explained to you, we have an event listener for this. So not get into details. Delete user method uh, is clicked, uh, uh, is called when the delete button is clicked on your uh, tabulator uh, form so if I go back to the form here we have the delete button and what happens when this delete button is clicked this model is loaded right so any model that is loaded in the profile.js in the user.js I have added a load model section here you can find the delete user method which is basically loading your models so this method gets called and we pass the username in this method and when the method is loaded here we display the username and we ask the admin do you want to delete the user id and we display the name or oh, actually it should be username with the id it should be with the username sorry for that you can change it or i will change it and then push the code not should not be id should be username so and i display the admin which is the username of the user. So if I go to this user, click delete, I will see tech howdy, which is the username of this user over here, which I clicked the delete button. So each delete button, each edit button is associated with the user in that row. Okay, so if you click this button uh, for delete, you will see the delete confirmation for that particular user who's on that row where this button exists so now we will go back and we will understand the other logic so delete user once again we are calling the ajax method and we are getting the confirmation if there is any failure we are using sweet alert if there is any success we are using sweet alert pop up to display the uh, uh, success confirmation also after we have deleted the user we need to call the load user method because the user will not exist in our database so there is no point to show the user in this table so when we call the load user method this table is loaded once again and the user that was deleted will not be shown over here so we go back and here we can close this now So these are the load models. Whenever we click on any button, the model gets loaded for add user, edit user. We spoke about the delete user. Now here is our tabulator code. In order to use tabulator, uh, we need to first initialize the table. So to initialize the table, we have to call the new tabulator method uh, on the uh, table that we want to initialize it so we pass the id of the table element and we call the tabulator method and here we can initialize all the values so here you can see i have put all my comments on the lines so you can understand why it is used so the layout i want the layout to fit columns 
so which means basically that you see that the entire table is fit onto this of uh, div so which means that when you add the fit column uh, attribute it will make sure that each and every column uh, is expanded and fits appropriately to the exact size of the div you can go through the tab tabulator documentation uh, and you can see what each and every property means and what properties you can use there are lots of properties so this is what i have used in this particular uh, tutorial so i have set the pagination size to 7 which means 7 rows will be delete uh, shown and if there is an 8 uh, 8 rows in your uh, table so let's go back here so we have 7 users you'll see the pagination as one if you have 8 users which means that you will see two pages over here one and two that's because we have set the pagination to be seven you can increase that or you can decrease that based on your requirement so go back go through all these other properties i'm not going to explain it now because i put my comments and you sh you can go through the tabulator documentation here just to uh, show you one more thing in tabulator which is uh, good which you can use formatters like for the image column i have used the image formatter which will make you display a image on the image column and you can set the height and width of the image using the format formatter params key and specify the height and width so tabulator is a really good framework and it gives you more options to experiment and play around whereas i didn't find these uh, options with data tables uh, i don't know i have not used data tables a lot but yes i use tabulator and i find tabulator much easy to use and modify so totally up to you if you feel like using some other framework for generating your tables and rows you can use that but i really find tabulator is really easy to use and quite straightforward so here we are creating the buttons that we use to display so, so i'm just concatenating some html elements and i am returning the buttons so i create a group of buttons and then i return that group of buttons and as you can see i have the group of button the edit and the delete button together you can add more buttons if you need by just copying this button code start and end tag of the button and you can create more buttons if you wish to let me just see if i can load it so if i the starting tag the opening tag and the closing tag of the button i copy this and i paste it like this let's see if i go back oh yeah this wouldn't load because we are, this is my final project sorry for that i have to run the application so let me just run it so the code would not load as i said uh, because we have to implement some other functionalities before we load the code in on this uh, ui that is created for user section i have loaded the local application because we need to add few more things before we load the page but yes if i go back to the application code if you want to add additional buttons you can do it like this so i'm just going to change the Thing that I just did so we don't get confused so for now I just have two buttons over here which is the edit and delete because that's all I need if I need to add, if you need to add more buttons you can add depending on your needs so now uh, these buttons have been added and these buttons when clicked call the edit user by ID method and call the delete user method so we have already implemented these methods in our application so edit user by id and delete user by id so you can see it over here we load the models and we confirm the from the user if they want to do that edit or no right so now we have some extension methods over here uh, these uh, extension methods are to open the file explorer so let me go back to the application so here if i go to the users all users page of the finished project here i click on the new user so that extension method to load the 
file explorer is when I click this button the file explorer will be loaded and if I select any file to preview the file in this uh, image section I have the preview image extension method so let's go back to the code here I have these two methods and you can go through the methods it's quite straightforward code all I have used in the preview image is the read as data URL which is a part of the reader file reader API which is inside your HTML5 browser so you can access this element so I have put my comments there as well so you can go through it and understand it we have the method to copy the billing address to the shipping address now we need this method all this method does is copies the existing billing address to the shipping address if you are an admin user and you are creating you are creating users and adding them in your application right so I add some address over here and what if this address the billing address of the user or the shipping address of the user is same as the billing address do I need to type it again no correct so I, I have created a button here where when the user clicks this button the billing address gets copied to the uh, shipping address so that's what this uh, method does in your application so it will copy that billing address to your shipping address so that's what is the logic inside this method method to generate random password we have this method this method is called when the button over on the form to reset or to create the password is clicked like this when we click it the password gets created right a random password so we generate this random password using this method and this method is calling the password generator method which we created in the password generator file and as I mentioned when we create the created the method we need to specify a length of how long we want the password to be if we don't specify the length the default length is 10 digits over here so that's what I have specified 6 as the minimum length because that's what I have put in the startup class minimum required password length is 6 so you can change it but make sure you change the length in the uh, startup class as well and the extension method for the error list error list extension method we have used it previously as well in the profile uh, controller to display the errors in the suite alert pop-up so we convert them into a list so that is an extension method uh, any error response that we get from the API all the errors we make a list of that and then we have the extension method to get the browser cookie we are going to use this method to get the uh, access RF token and attach it to the request as mentioned in the uh, video tutorial at the beginning that we are going to implement anti-forgery token in this application but I don't want to confuse you uh, with mixing two things together so when we implement the anti-forgery tokens we will make use of this method to get the cookie from the browser for now I have just created this extension method but we will be using this method after we have completed the anti-forgery token video tutorial because we will need to add that logic in the Ajax methods that we have created don't get confused I will explain it to you but for now that's all you need in this uh, file all these methods and these methods will be used in the uh, form that we are created in the models so that should be it for this video tutorial because this video tutorial is quite lengthy let's continue working on the uh, user section in the next video tutorial so in this video tutorial we have created the user.js file the password generator file uh, model pop-ups and all the layouts in the next method we need to implement all the API methods that we are calling in the next tutorial sorry we need to implement all the API methods that we are creating uh, calling so we have to work on this as I mentioned to you that when I loaded the uh, local application the users were not being loaded that's because we don't have any APIs yet created to load this user so we have to implement all these methods so we will do that in the next video tutorial 
as you see guys these videos take lots of time to create lots of time spent to write all these lines of code and to make sure that there are no errors while we uh, put them up in the uh, github repo or on the devops repo so all we expect from you is a like and a subscribe as we provide you all this code for free please do not forget to subscribe and like our channel if you have any questions use the comment section and uh, once again thank you for watching